how do you cope with it? Soon after Laurie posted her first video, her family discovered that she was not alone. <laughs> Somebody had messaged me and said, oh my goodness, this is you gotta see this. Check this out, look at this video. And I saw this girl being champion with Laurie, and my heart, even now, it makes me have goosebumps. There's a mysterious and frightening outbreak going on in a small town in western New York State. Several girls have ticks and twitches, and so far, no one knows why. How in the world can all this happen? And then over here, same thing happening in our town. I don't understand it. Something is not right. In late September, in the town of Leroy, there were more than half a dozen cases of girls aged between 13 and 16 suffering from an outbreak of Tourette-like symptoms. I was always so active. I was always so active and everybody was always happy to be around me, but I, I don't feel like myself. When Sarah's mum took her to the hospital, the nurse made a surprising revelation. She had said, not to alarm you, you know, but somebody needs to contact somebody because you're the fourth girl and we could come in with that. New questions are being raised in the wake of yet another reported case. Chelsea Dumas is the latest teenage girl from Leroy High School to come forward to report she suffers from severe tics. I've been I've been going to this. A lot of it was as if they had caught the Tourette like tips from one another as all the girls went to the same high school. I was very angry not to have known that you know other girls were going through that. Seventeen year old Lydia Parker, a senior at Leroy High School, was one of the first girls to suffer from the Tourette like symptoms. She came upstairs and she said, Mom, I'm, I can't stop stuttering. And every word that she was speaking was a stutter. She had just started spasming, crying because the pain was so bad. So I took her to the after hours place in Leroy, and they said, if you don't take her up to Strong, she could die. I've been doing tests and tests and tests, MRIs, EEGs, blood tests, and nothing's going on. I just wanted anybody out there that knew about what was going on to let me know, to let the school know, to let the state know, to let somebody know. Please just tell us what this is and where it came from and how we can get rid of it. In this close-knit rural community of only 7,000 people, wild theories about the cause of this frightening outbreak quickly spread throughout the town. They were kind of worried because what's suffering is out from us. We could get it. Anyone in the town could get it. To many people, something frightening is happening. Then speculation started. I heard, well, I heard, uh, well, it's because teenagers are using their cell phones too much. Hello. Some of the calls and emails that I was receiving, you know, someone saying that the mafia was re responsible for what was going on. That we need to investigate because the fact that a cafeteria worker was poisoning the food. We have, you know, several emails that we received. I would say, you know, well over a thousand. We had some really obscure things. Um, people that were thinking that the jet trails from the, the planes going overhead were perhaps doing something. One was offering um, exorcism, um, that we should try that. One of the allegations that was being made was that they had all smoked synthetic marijuana, and they had all been treated in, in an emergency room. A nurse said the first three or four girls that came down with this illness came into the hospital sick about two months ago. I smoked spice. Please do not tell my parents. And the nurse and the doctor are under law. Now they can't do it. And this nurse said, you don't know how much I would love to go on TV and tell my story right now. we will put an end to a lot of this. This is verbatim from the nurse's mouth. You can call it when it was a real homebody. She had her specific couple of friends that she was around, and that was as far as it went. And they're all pretty good kids that she's around for the most part. I'm going to have to disagree with her. Her friends are a few of her friends that she hangs out with, a few drugs, a few little brag about all this stuff. Have we had instances where young people had to go to the hospital? Yes, we have, but I think it's important to point out how many of you and the side effects weren't the symptoms that these girls were exhibiting. 
With no evidence that any of the girls had taken drugs or that the tips were a side effect of this, and even though the cases had increased to 10, people began to suspect that this was an elaborate teenage hoax. Because of the fact that there was a big group of people that have this happen to, then a lot of people are assuming that they were doing it for attention. When really there's something really medically wrong with us. That we have no idea and it just came out of nowhere. This one comment, it was posted in my first video and they were saying I was a fake attention for it. And other people were telling me to go die and all that kind of stuff. I know what it feels like to be able not to function properly or be able to have your life or anything like that. Hey, 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 not a great feeling. Last time I went to the neurologist, they said that they're not sure and that they'll keep looking into it. This one is from fainting and I hit my head on my bed post. The side of her mouth would go down. You know, we can't fake that. I can't make the side of my mouth go down like that. So that's why people say faking and I'm like, what do you mean? It doesn't make any sense. With no clear answer for this outbreak, doubts over the validity of the girl's symptoms intensified. Has the idea that it could be a hoax I find it hard to believe that you can fake the symptoms so uniformly. I feel like people look at me and judge me. Seriously, why would you fake this?